Hare Krishna, and welcome back to the Bliss Podcast, episode 21. I'm your host, Maitreya Rishi Dutta, and I'm here with Puruja Prabhu, the founder of the Bhaktivedanta Lives and Sound Society. Hare Krishna, it's a great pleasure to be with you. Thank you, Prabhu. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, if you weren't here for the previous episode, we were talking about how our parents hate Krishna for taking away us, taking us away from the family and from um, material life and, and material enjoyment. And so if you would like to go and listen to that podcast, you can swing on back to um, that episode through the Expand the Bliss channel, which is one of our two channels. Um, and the other one is Kick on the Face, which you can also find. Uh, I'm going to put the link for that in the description of this video which you can find below. That is YouTube. If you're on Facebook, um, we also on Facebook, just search for Expand the Bliss, right? Or oh, Bhakti Vedanta Lives in Sound Society. But I think if you yeah. look for Expand the Bliss, you'll find it. You'll find us. We also on Instagram, and uh, we also have our own website, expandthebliss.com, uh, that has many articles, and um, that, what, that's where we put everything, right? That's pretty much the, that's the, the hub of bliss. If you want to uh, water the root of bliss, you go <laughs> to the expandthebliss.com and then, then, then you can find everything there. Right. Yeah. You can also find uh, some nice ebooks there and um, the links to um, our support pages like Patreon and GoFundMe. Very important. Very important. And um, I've explained all these things in previous podcasts, but a quick summary. You can just Patreon, you can subscribe monthly, GoFundMe, you can give a one time. And on Patreon, you'll be entitled to ebook rewards. It's a very nice system. I recommend that everyone go check it out. We also have a PayPal. Um, so if you want to donate through PayPal, because sometimes devotees and our friends, um, they have difficulty with the GoFundMe like that. We right. also have a PayPal. All the information is available. You can also send us a message if you want to ask a question or if you have a suggestion for a, a topic you want us to discuss on the podcast. Don't hesitate to contact us through social media. My name is Purajit Das. This is Maitreya Rishi Dasa. We're on Facebook. We're very much, um, we pretty much respond all the messages that we receive. Don't be uh, shy. Drop a line. Um, challenge us if you want or reveal your mind if you're going through some trouble or you have some question to ask about the philosophy of Krishna consciousness just go for it yeah you can uh, get in contact with us and even though right now the uh, corona virus I'm sure everyone is still affected by corona but um, yeah, the coronavirus is locking down Spain so um, we don't have access to our usual Wi-Fi over in by the Gibraltar Rock, the, as um, Puruji Prabhu calls it, the Govardhan Hill. As it kind of looks like a big uh, Govardhan Leela of Krishna, but um, uh, you, we don't have our access to Wi-Fi over there, so we have to go to the local McDonald's, and it's um, kind of slow and a bit of a hike away. So um, our messaging is. Uh, and we're always afraid that we're gonna get arrested. <laughs> right. Because that is illegal just to sit there and log on the internet anytime the police can come and oops now i said something now if they're watching it they're gonna the the spanish fbi are actually <laughs> keeping close track of the bliss podcast they know exactly what we're that's up to. the only thing they do they checking our podcasts on youtube yeah. actually it's just an excuse for them to listen to about krishna krishna Qatar. right but they say it's just so they can catch us they cheat the police boss they right. want to simply hear about krishna consciousness yeah. how to practice japa and so on and so on and yeah the anyway. poor security guy there he's trying to read Prabhupada's books but <laughs> so on this episode of wait we should oh. also um uh thank our donors ah thank you yes thank you for reminding me to thank them yeah um peter kishna thank you very much for your continued support prabhu it's uh we very much appreciate uh, you think you're giving on gofundme um, so that is very nice. And um, uh, who else? Uh, um, Dushan. Dushan also. Um, uh, and, and Christian Liotta. Okay, Prabhu. okay. Jay. Very nice friend. He also 
uh, he's sponsoring our um, appearance on the Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout if, if you were listening to this on Buzzsprout, I think that's, that Buzzsprout is sprouting to many others, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. Like a Spotify and yeah. Mortify and Krishnafy. And <laughs> Krishnafy, that's a cool platform. Yeah, we should make our own podcast. Uh, Krishnafy. Krishnafy. It, sounds, it sounds like a name for a new hip-hop album. Okay. Krishnafy. You got a Krishnafy. You got a Krishnafy. Instead of testify, yeah. a Krishnafy. So we're about to Krishnafy right now, actually. Right. So, That's what the Christians do, right? They testify. Yeah. How you I gotta came... testify! And, so it's, and then he's explaining yeah. how he came to Jesus, right? Yeah, actually, yeah. yeah. That's, that is so, giving the testimony. So okay. now we're going to give the Christian so, money. Okay, so this podcast, it can, we can call it How We Krishnafy. Okay. The, the Krishnafy. Okay. Time to, time to Krishnafy. Time to Krishnafy. Okay. <laughs> so, the Krishnafy. Prabhu, what's important for us to understand before we Krishnafy? Well, the idea behind this topic is that many times people are asking, so what made you to do this? What happened in your life that um, you have given up everything and now you are a monk? Or a Krishna devotee, what happened? Why, why is this? What happened to you? <laughs> they think it's like anomaly. <laughs> they think Krishna consciousness is an anomaly. There's something wrong with you. So they want to help you okay. by going to the root. What is the cause of you, your mental disease? <laughs> you, you poor soul. <laughs> I see you out on the streets. You're with peanut butter on your face. <laughs> You're so misled. Let me take you under my wing. <laughs> kind of like that, yeah. Only if they knew <laughs> right. that one time I met this one guy. I won't mention his name because... <laughs> but um, he was a disciple of Prabhupada. Oh, wow, okay. In the early days. Uh-huh. And I met him in Montreal. And now he is very much against the bodies. Oh. Yeah. Oh. He is very much against it. He calls it brainwashing. Oh, and he's, you know, into this kind of thing. Oh, people want to hear the brainwashing. Oh, it was brainwashing. It wasn't me. Right. They have brainwashed me. Yeah. Excuses. Yeah. Just cover yourself with some excuses for your freedom, for your choices. You're not willing to uh, face your your independent decisions or take responsibility for your independent That's, decisions. Yeah. So you blame it on someone. So anyway, he started preaching to me. This is brainwash, and blah blah blah. And he said, "You you believe all this? You believe that Krishna is Krishna or something like that?" He said. So I said, "One hundred percent." Haribo. <laughs> so he was taken aback, you know. And then, then he said that you are so brainwashed. That it, it's impossible to unbrainwash you. Oh. <laughs> You're a lost case. <laughs> right. So I said, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, that is a, uh, an achievement of a staunch, uh, staunch devotee. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. You have very nicely uh, encouraged me <laughs> in my Krishna consciousness. Well, yeah. So I think uh, it's an it's a interesting topic to look at this, this evolution and also many times we're wondering with the bodies and you know like how what is how can we communicate this wonderful uh, philosophy to people how can we break through all these layers of biases and fears mm-hmm. and misconceptions people have because that's what it is Prabodhananda Saraswati Thakur one of the associate of Lord Chaitanya he says that um, if you simply give uh, an open hearing, if you open up your mind and just hear and try to understand what is this Krishna consciousness philosophy without giving it any particular, you know, people are very, they immediately want to categorize, and they want to be smart and they want to say, well, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's like this, like you, that. You religious yeah. fanatics, yeah. you're all the same. Yeah, because they're on the relative platform, they want to relate. Hmm. 
They want to relate. Hmm. Like Krishna. Right? Krishna says, Avajananti Mamudha. Those who think of me as, as an ordinary man, they're fools. They can never understand Krishna consciousness. Krishna is God. Krishna is not under any uh, um, influence of any of the material energies. He is uh, fully independent. When he comes and he manifests his pastimes, um, this is simply his lila, his, his play, his joy. Even if Krishna is apparently uh, suffering, this is also his, for his enjoyment. It's all just the lila. When we suffer, it is not our lila. We're in, we're in forced, we're forced by Hare Krishna. So now we have natural ambience here. We open up the door for some fresh air because we were suffocating. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. So anyway, as I was saying, um, people in general, of course, not everyone is like that, but there's a kind of like a different process of how to understand Krishna consciousness. It's not by relating to something that you already know, but uh, you should just hear without any bias and just hear, and that's it. And you'll find this philosophy is sublime. Yes, you just hear because nothing, nothing in this world can relate to Krishna. Jai. Although Krishna is manifesting this world, uh, nothing in this world can compare to Krishna. Yeah, everything technically relates to Krishna, right? Yes. Like, but it cannot, like Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that um, I am everywhere, still I am not there. Yeah. Achinta Beda Beda Tattva, the philosophy of simultaneous oneness and difference of Krishna. So just like people, they misunderstand Krishna to be an ordinary man, they also misunderstand devotees to be, um, you know, affected by the material energy. They think that Krishna consciousness arises from some material circumstance. Mm. That you had some bad day, or your girlfriend left you, or your parents died, and then out of great hopelessness and weakness, you have taken up this practice, Krishna consciousness. Yeah, but don't the material circumstances somewhat um, affect how a person is going to, you know, choose? Because, I mean... We... And that's what Krishna Fi is all about. On this topic, right? Yeah, right, precisely. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's that. I, don't, I, I just want to get the immediate answer, but you're going to have to listen. Everyone's going to have to listen <laughs> to the podcast all the way through to get this thorough answer. Yes. So. So, um, yeah, that, that is why we always go to the, uh, to the core. Why? Why you have to uh, unnecessarily investigate what is the... the a nice mo motorbike. I think it's okay. I think he's just on the verge of taking up Krishna consciousness. He's actually pulling up to the temple right now. We better finish up the podcast. It's Krishna flying on a motorbike. <laughs> um, why you have to unnecessarily investigate the uh, the speaker's circumstances? Right. It's a, it's a, this is this is this is the form of controlship, right? It's just an excuse. So they don't have to, you know, they don't have to um, uh, uh, investigate what is the actual um, philosophical understanding of Krishna consciousness. Okay, but even you can say like this, that, that even before they investigate, they already are trying to control mm -hmm. the, the knowledge. Mm -hmm. So this, this um, attitude must be kicked out. Right. Completely kicked out. Right. They try to make it sectarian. Yes. That... Ah, uh, because of, because you did this in this way, that is why you accepted Krishna consciousness. And because I I did not follow that same path, I don't have to become a cheap mendicant like you. Thank you very much. Yes, <laughs> by lording it over, yeah. I know the secret that you telling me something, but I know more than you. I know why you have. Right. Why are you saying this? I know. Yeah, right. Yeah, That's yeah, you're it. studying this Krishna the whole time and no, you, you've, you've made your knowledge very limited. But let me tell you. 
Let yeah. me tell you something. So that's why Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati he says, just hear, mm. don't judge. Mm. Just hear, don't have preconceived ideas. You know nothing about Krishna. Who, who are you? You don't even know what is going on in your intestine after you eat <laughs> nice sambar. You don't know why, why you have indigestion. You don't know how your heart is beating and why it stops beating at the time of death. You don't know why that happens. You don't know why you were born to your parents, specifically to, there's so many parents in the world, why you have taken birth in this particular family, uh, why you have this um, sort of propensity in life, you are in an, either you're an artist or intellectual, or you were just a worker, sport guy, or... It was just genetics, yeah. by chance. By chance, okay, then that is not the answer. So you don't know anything, pretty much. You were just thrown into, the, um, into your life from the womb, you come out <laughs> like that and then the society the parents the school the culture the tv the youtube this that they're just telling you take this do that mm. this is how you can enjoy mm. your your body your mm. senses you have senses right so that you can see yeah i have senses i have some needs i have a sex desire right the, the teenagers they do, they discover oh i have a sex desire Oh, and then, you know, they just tell, you have that sex desire? Yeah, okay, take this, do that, this, give, that. Give that. me money, give me money, give me money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is what the material life is about. So at one point, uh, the jiva, all the jivas, all the souls, all the living entities, at a certain point, they come to this, this idea that, wait a minute, it's called... In the Vedic terminology, it's called Atta to Brahma Jigyasa. What is that? Uh, life begins with inquiry. Yes, inquisitiveness about the absolute truth. What the hell is this? So, Prabhupada even says, unless you come to this point, uh, you're not better than the animal. What? Yeah. What? You're calling me an animal? Man? Oh, yeah. That is so insulting. You Hare Krishna. Take it. That is... And enjoy it. Very nice. It is very nice. Yes? <laughs> Nectar to the ears. It's like Prabhupada says. It's very nice. Yes? Mm. <laughs> so, um, yeah. You are an animal because the animals also, they have sex desire. They have eating desire. They have sleeping desire. And they have defending desire. Oh, you have taken my bone? Prabhupada gives this ni nice analogy mm -hmm. that the borders, of course, now that problem is no longer there. <laughs> <laughs> there are no more borders anymore. You can't go anywhere. You're locked up. The world has been nicely divided into cells, big cells. <laughs> we live in the cell called Spain. We're in the Spanish mitochondria right now. Spanish prison house. <clears throat> so Prabhupada says, just like dogs, when the dog... You know, when you come to the dog's area, immediately, oh, you're coming to my house? Woof, 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 woof. Get out, get out. And this is a dog. I remember when I was a child, we used to go, my grandmother, she had this garden. Mm -hmm. And before you reach that garden, you had to go through many other gardens. And there was this one big garden that the neighbor had. And there was this, this dog, the German Shepherd. And each time we were passing by, he was barking like crazy. It was mm -hmm. scary. Mm -hmm. Especially, you know, if you're a small child, it's, it's really it's, it's scares the, the stool out of your bum. <laughs> I can imagine. So, um, yeah, so it's like that. The borders also. Where's your passport? Where's your visa? What are you doing here? Right. What do you want? What, are you a citizen? Are you this? Are you that? Du, 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 du. Just like dogs. Right. You have a work contract? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's how we, we found out. Because we're quite disconnected. We're just here in our little ashram, hearing and chanting and having a good Krishna conscious fun. Haribo. Come and join us. Come and move in with us. Don't hesitate. If you're hearing this, you want to dedicate your life at least for a few years to a monk life, go for it. You know, we're open. Come and move in with us. Um, so, being so disconnected from the so-called reality, uh, we came to the border 
uh, last month, thinking that, oh, we can go to Gibraltar and do our regular thing, go on the internet, do some book distribution. And the uh, border man, how do you call them? The customs? The, the, the communi- communists? Co- communists. <laughs> Marx, Karl Marx was there on the border. Yeah. Border, border, border. Yeah, I hadn't seen him in a long time, Karl Marx, but he was really like inquisitive there. <laughs> so, yeah. so they stopped us and they say, where are you going? Uh, well, we want to go. What, what is the purpose? Why are you going there? Well, we want to go on the internet. What did we, just, what did we say? Well, I well, he it's said, always very he said, difficult. He said, "You're working. You have you have job." And I, I was like, "Well, yeah, we, we have we're... the most important job is to awaken the living entity from the slumber of ignorance." People are gonna die. They're gonna be animals in their next birth. Don't you get it, man? Come on, let us across the border, or you're gonna get the same thing. Yamaraj is there for you, man. Yeah, I don't know what we said, but not he, back there. He didn't think. get it. He said, "You need a work permit." The right. contract, the contract, contract. Right. You have to have the uh, um, dog. I did say dog collar. The contract is like a dog, <laughs> dog collar. collar. Yeah. You don't have a dog collar, so you cannot enter. This is only for dogs. Dog tag. <laughs> dog tag. <yeah. laughs> only for dogs. So if you don't have a dog collar in name of a work in in the shape of a uh, uh, work contract, you cannot. You know. So anyway, uh, at one point, you realize that. This is not why I'm here for in this life, in this world. This is not, this is, it's boring. You know, even one time I had this friend in Montreal, very um, uh, kind of a passionate lady Mm -hmm. from Philippines. So uh, she said, uh, she was challenging. They said, what, you, you are doing sex? What is this? <laughs> you, what, M- monk, what, uh, you're a cheater. <laughs> so I said, uh, so what's so special about this sex? You tell me, what, what, is, what is that wonderful thing? And she said, that, oh, well, it's, you know, it's nice. Sex life is nice. It's love. I said, what is that love? What is it? Can you explain? Can you convert me <laughs> to, the se- <laughs> to, the, to the sex cult? To the sex cult, yeah. And she couldn't say, she couldn't explain. You know, there's no logic. It's not just like an animal. Hmm. Prabhupada says, why you need the sex education? Why in school you need to educate the children how to... S- the animals, they do that. It's natural. Right. You don't need, you know, it's natural. It's the instincts, whatever. You have sex or so what? You don't need education and... S- sex psychology and Freud and whatever. Yeah, they'll so, say the varieties are what make the material enjoyments nice. But yeah, the varieties, varieties. Krishna will give you variety. You know, you can be a pigeon. You can have sex life three hundred times a day. You can be a monkey. You can be a tiger. So that sort of variety, the activity stays the same. It's the same sex life. Yeah, Prahlad Maharaj says that it's chewing the chutes. There you go. Doing the same activity and getting the same pleasure, but expecting that it'll be something new each time that you do it. And yeah. actually, it just brings you frustration every time. Yeah, this is Maya. This is really Maya. We're doing the same thing, but we're thinking, because of Maya's so-called very goodness, we think that we're doing something different. Just for clarification, Maya means illusion. Yeah. That which is not. I think people know that, no? Well, I don't know. Some people might be watching this for the first time. If they're so fortunate... Maya is like a, a standard word now, no? I, I don't know, Prabhu. I, no? I think we live in a, a very closed-off universe. Here okay, let us, know, <laughs> let us know. <laughs> Write us a comment on YouTube. Is Maya... The, the standard should be that... Uh, a standard word? In, in, or or is, do we still need to do so, preaching so much? Everyone, should, everyone who listens to this podcast should preach it so... Um, uh, um, Passionately, pro- prolifically, that the word Maya becomes a commonplace word. Well, why? Why just Maya? Let's let's push Krishna. more. Let's push more. Yeah. Sadhana. Sadhana. <laughs> Krishna. Like people, you know, they. Will, I want people to wake up in the morning and after saying, "Yeah, this morning, you know, I I took my breakfast, but that was just after I did my, you know, my sadhana, my sixteen rounds. Like there won't be any more prajalpa anymore. I want that kind of." Prolific preaching. That Can you imagine a Mangala Arate becomes like a common word? Yeah. Mang- I do my Mangala Arate. Yeah. How, how was your Mangala Arate? 
Like the news won't be called news after eight. It'll be called news after Guru Puja. <laughs> <laughs> the whole world becomes Krishna conscious. Can you yeah. imagine that, all the ways it will change? Okay, so let's steer back to the Krishna Fi right. topic. You got a Krishna Fi. You got a Krishna Fi. So people are probably they're expecting this a little, you know, a little prajapa. They want to know about our karmi life. Right, right. And That's what, what we're, we're doing. About. And yeah, this okay. So we should not give them that satisfaction. Yeah, it's so uh, why I want to talk about my nonsense previous life. Krishna yeah. is so much more interesting. You had so many lives before. That's the thing. We've been prostitutes. We've been pedophiles. <laughs> I, mean, I was Hitler at one point. I mean, some devotees were pedophiles even in this life. Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can censorship yeah. this, right? But after? Yep, yeah, that will that will happen, and then we'll have an also an uncensored, a raw version of the podcast <laughs> that everyone can check out. Uh, only for the Patreon. Only members. for the Patreon members, though. That's a that's a mid level Patreon rewards. Yeah. So anyway, we've been everything. Imagine so many lifetimes we pass through people actually then they, they don't realize when they say yeah i believe in reincarnation well okay but do you really understand what it means no. reincarnation no. millions and millions of lifetimes not just in a human form in the animal forms in the plant forms we have to pass through all that to satisfy our desires um, they so think reincarnation means that i be a human in this life and in the next life, I'd be a human. And in the next life, I will, after that, I become a human. I just get to enjoy more and more and more. I get another chance to enjoy. They don't understand. And that. they sometimes inquire, do you know what I was in my past life? Yeah, can you touch was, my palms and realize what I was? In was, my like, was I a Marilyn Monroe or JFK <laughs> or like that? It was a, a pharaoh? pharaoh? Um, they think, you know, I, I met people in book distribution who were convinced that they were pharaohs and Napoleons and... Oh, Pharaoh, okay, okay. Sorry, Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Okay. Yeah, there was one guy, he was convinced I was a... Yeah, the Pharaoh thing is very... Egyptian princess. Yeah. <laughs> They're like serious. Yeah, no, no. They're because, convinced? Because there's a nonsense um, a group of <laughs> new age spiritualists right. who say that they can trace back the previous lives. But my thing is that if you were to trace back your previous life, my good friend, you would, you would not ever do it again. Because right. you were in the, you were being forced. You would see how the spirit soul is taken from the body and forced by nature into a lower form of body, like a dog, any animal, any yeah. animal. That is just so. It's so Scary. full of suffering. Yeah. Scary. Yeah. Can you imagine being an elephant? Uh, well, elephant's a good one. <laughs> Prabhupada he gives this nice example. A bat. That bat's pretty bad. You're blind. You just go around. Yeah, that's, that's one thing, but do you know how the bats pass their stool? Through the mouth. There you go. Shoo! Ding, 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 ding. All right. Yeah, Papa, I give this nice example sometimes that Papa gives. That, um... Let's have a bat jingle. <laughs> one day I woke up. Oh, oh Krishna, Krishna doesn't Jayetan. want the bat jingles. <laughs> but yeah, the tiger is climbing uh, naked. Uh -huh. On a tree and eating raw meat, and some, why is he going on a tree? Well, because that's what sometimes they, they get the they get the prey or jaguars, you know, uh -huh. tigers. They get the prey and then they bring it up to a tree to eat. I've I've heard it like that. Okay, the so, bats are passing stools through their mouth. <laughs> so, don't be a bat. Don't Chan be a Hare Krishna <laughs> now. <laughs> I don't know whether whether to call this episode "Don't Be a Bat" or "Time to Krishnify." So yeah, okay. people, Krishna Pai Prabhu, yeah. I'm trying to Krishna Pai here, and the bat. Now I'm thinking of bats pooping out their mouths. It's <laughs> it's really co co complicating the brain. Woo! <laughs> so, oh, okay. Okay. So yeah. Anyway, people. I've heard people say that. Um, yeah, in my, I don't mind. I want to be a tiger. Or, yeah, that'd be cool. Wouldn't it be cool to be a dog or a tiger? Like, the people actually have this thing, spirit animals. You know, my spirit animal. My spirit animal is a tiger. So maybe in my previous life, I wasn't, or maybe I will be a tiger. But if you think about how horrible that is, if you right now, you just take your present situation, instead of going to school 
or going to enjoy or being with your family or whatever, whatever nonsense. Instead of that activity, you get naked and you climb a tree and eat raw meat or you go on the street on all fours and eat stool like a dog. I mean, that's horrible. That's not, um, that's not a desirable situation. So. Yeah, the nature of material desire is that it degrades you. Mm -hmm. this, people don't understand this, that the desire is not all in all in life. They think, I don't want to do this. And I don't want to do this chanting and your Krishna thing. Right. I want this. I want, don't want that. And they base their whole life on wants and don't wants. Right. But they don't understand that the, the nature of material desire is it degrades. Hmm. Like if you um, indulge in sense gratification, um, then the desire is, is degrading more and more. Right? The, the whole, uh, according to the Vedic um, uh, version, how homosexuality actually takes place, it is... It, is, it has a cause. It is not causeless. Right. Like they say chance again. Someone is born as, as gay or, or, or not. It is not chance. It is the, the homosexual appetite uh, is due to overindulgence in heterosexuality. Right. This, though, those who are indulging in uh, sex with women... Uh, in their future life, they will be homosexual. They do it so much, they get fed up with even that kind of sex enjoyment, so they gotta do something more, you, you, experimental. You have, you have credit. <laughs> if you exhaust your credit, you have to, that's how it works. Yeah, and then, if you, and then after the gay, then you get a, one more chance, which is you get to be a tree. You wanted to uh, be naked so much that yeah. you get to be a tree in your next life. Yeah, this is all stated in the uh, in the Vedas. All this this karmic law, you, you can um, predict your future if you if you accord. What is the karma? Karma is the reaction to activity. So in the Vedic scriptures, mm, everything is explained. What is pious activity? What is impious activity? And what is the result? of your activity. So if you study the Vedic scriptures with an unbiased mind, then you can pretty much know what is your future life. People are asking, what was I in my previous life? But they should ask, where am I going from right, here? Right. And they should change their, their um, life in such a way that they don't have to suffer in the future. This is intelligence. Right. So uh, of course, before that happens, there must be the, the inquisitiveness, atato brahma jigyasa, and that is the first step, the first contact with Krishna. Even might not be direct contact with Krishna, but this is the first condition that we must come to the inquisitiveness. And um, right, if you don't ask, you'll never know. Yeah. So yeah, this is a very interesting point. That why, like you mentioned, that why people should come to the point where they ask, why am I? suffering so much here and um yeah that's like a very interesting point that i was also thinking about it like this that if people you know if we are if there's not any if there's not reincarnation and um you're just the body and this life is all that there is you're just like a mass of chemicals then um why if it's if that's natural then why do you resist um the suffering that life brings so much Right. If life is just a natural, um, uh, the sufferings of life are just a natural consequence of, and that is what is actually meant to happen, then um, there's no need to resist or there's no um, experience of something that is pleasure, happiness, or eternity for you to question, why do I have to die? Why is there suffering like that? Just like our beloved, lovely Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, um, even if you th if you thought that um, there is no soul, right. you still have no reason to lament, O oh, Arjuna. Mm -hmm. What is this lamentation? If we're just a bunch of chemicals reincarnating, why are you crying? There's not, nothing is going to change. Yeah. Chemicals stay. The body is, you know, the same. Yeah, no one, no one gets upset if they blow up, you know, so many things with chemical weapons or they create... Like uh, they waste so many products, plastic products, everything. They waste so many chemicals every day. 
Yeah. So what's the difference between a living entity and just another collection of chemicals that turns out to be in, inanimate uh, matter? If you were an atheist. If you're yeah. an atheist. Yeah, of course, we don't accept that. Right. But Krishna is very nicely challenging. Right. You know, why are you crying there? He, he's, he's challenging. He's this. smiling at Arjuna. Yeah. So um, that is the, I think that is the, the first step in, in approaching Krishna. That to be honest, yes, actually, I am suffering. I am sad. It is, it is like it is. I'm not in charge of my life. I, I can't do, I, there are things, there are causes beyond my power to influence. I, I, I'm facing some reality and um, I'm not the only one here in this universe. Right. Maybe, I just one suggestion. Yeah. Maybe we can just, we can bring it back to the original topic. Uh -huh. Just, just, we can like talk about some point or principle okay from the original topic yeah of course talking about krishna just off the top is yeah. very nice yeah. but um just so it keeps to the substance of the podcast mm -hmm. so okay i'll shoot first um what are we what what, what, are we, what are we actually discussing again exactly what was our life before we right practice krishna consciousness right and not just that but how we can relate this to people who are not practicing Krishna consciousness right. and maybe who would like to or who would not like to. <laughs> <laughs> that is the, yeah. How can we relate to, to each other or is it important? Mm. Yeah, the, the most common thing is that people in general, they, they're running from us. <laughs> they're r running from us. Everyone is running. Yeah, they hear the ding ding tsh, ding ding tsh, and then they they immediately know ah it's the Hare Krishna so they're gonna try and actually Prabhupada brings up this point that for materialistically inclined people the devotee is a, a very um as like a scary a scary figure because yeah, can you imagine being a monster one <laughs> one day you wake up <laughs> like looking like a Freddy Krueger <laughs> and then you go Maybe people who have like some damage, damaged face uh -huh. or, you know, like they have some disability. Right. Lots of burns all over the body. Yeah. yeah. They might, they might have this. Realization. Yeah. I also met people like that on book distribution. Yeah. Well, the people, they wake up and they walk outside and people get scared of them. Yeah. They're very present. So imagine you're like that. So that is Krishna consciousness. That is, <laughs> if you have a Krishna conscious preacher then you know, even people are saying that, oh, you're so nice, and right. they try to make an impression that they don't mind that you look like a yeah. Freddy Krueger. Everyone else out here is saying you look like a crazy person, but I think it's kind of cool. Yeah, so you, that it's kind of like that, that people, even those who are friendly, they say, oh, yeah, I, I <laughs> like you guys, and but actually, no, mm. because you're not taking it up, man. <laughs> You're not, you're not doing it. Yeah, if it was so cool, then come to the temple. Yeah, if you really understand the importance of this life, then you must get serious. If you're not taking it seriously, then... You don't understand the importance. Yeah. It's a natural consequence. It looks silly. Yeah. It looks silly. Prabhupada says this very nicely in the, uh, in the Bhagavatam or something, that the, um, when one understands who he is, the soul, eternal soul, that there is uh, also God, he is part and parcel, and this world is full of suffering, then the natural, if you actually understand that, then naturally you're going to try and engage in devotional service. Yes. So anyway, the first, there must be a desire. Everything there must be a desire. So this Hare Krishna mantra <coughs> has such potency that even one is unwilling I, I was unwilling. I, when I read Prabhupada's book, um, Bhagavad Gita, I read. That was what um, inspired me to take up Krishna consciousness a little bit more seriously. Um, I was unwilling to surrender. What Prabhupada was saying was horrible. <laughs> there is God that you have to surrender 
You have to give up sense gratification. You have yep. to give up your independence. You know, like that. What you are want in this life is nonsense. <laughs> it's temporary. You're gonna die. <laughs> Nectar to the ears. <laughs> yeah, I was unwilling, but because by some chance or I don't know why, um, I was uh, frustrated. I took up this chanting process. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare, 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 Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 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 Hare Hare. And by this chanting, uh, I used to go to school. I was in, I was in art school. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the way to school, I would be chanting. I would make up my own melody. Hare Krishna. I forgot this melody now. But... Uh, it was a long time ago. Yeah, I would chant in the, in the bus. You know, just quietly because there's a you know the noise from the bus, <laughs> right? So nobody could hear me, and I would be chanting the whole way to school. Mm. Forty five minutes it would mm. take me. Uh, constantly, I would be chanting. I wanted to be constantly in this Krishna consciousness. Mm. That was that is another important thing. It's not a hobby. Uh, I uh, had some drug um, experiences. And uh, I, I uh, felt that um, this drug uh, intoxication is actually more exciting than the sober state. Right. Well, people, they take, for example, alcohol, mm -hmm. right? And they get drunk. They have something, something, they get drunk and they have hangover yeah. and they go on with their life. It's kind of like, but these uh, drugs, the psychedelic drugs. It changes your consciousness. Th yeah, it, it gives you some kind of a uh, idea that there is, there is a higher reality yes. beyond this. Yeah. We're not, we don't advocate drugs. Not at all. There's a nice... That we can, you can find a podcast on this <laughs> very topic on the, yeah. on the Bliss website. Yeah, we don't, we don't advertise drugs. Drugs, don't, don't take drugs. It's nonsense. But because many devotees have this experience uh, prior to, to uh, their contact with Krishna consciousness, it is a topic that we sometimes discuss. Um, so so um, uh, it gives you kind of like a hint that, that there is some, some higher reality that is better than this reality. I mean, it, even Prabhupada, he says that um, these drugs, they're, they, uh, now I'm really paraphrasing, it's in the Bhagavatam, but he says that um, the drugs, they, uh, uh, they, they manifest the inconceivable potency of Krishna. Oh, okay. Right? People describing uh, wild experiences with LSD and all these, I mean, so many drugs there are. They, the experiences are truly... Uh, Amazing, Great, yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's like it's something to study. I mean, not that by taking the drugs, <laughs> but it's yeah. It's like yeah. It's very alien. Why it's why this experience is there? Yeah. Beyond totally beyond the senses, you could say like that. Yeah, it's something like what is like unbelievable. So um, um, yeah, I I understood at that point that um, I can't keep on taking drugs because this is a uh, downward spiral is it an expression yeah, yeah. it's a down, downward spiral you know you just go on taking drugs drugs and then you become like a junkie complete uh, no you like you destroy yourself basically the body the mind everything yeah when i was a kami they would there was this thing that me and my friends would do it's called chasing the dragon you know you had the first time experience mm -hmm. it's very good so then you're always trying to go after that first time. Right. But because you kind of become saturated, you never really get it. Right. So you basically end up wasting your money, your time, yeah. your energy, and your brain cells looking for that uh, high. Yes. Of course. Anyway, that's another thing. Yeah, yeah very much so. Drugs are very demoniac. I, you know, I was, the other day I was reading, Prabhupada says in the Bhagavatam, in his Delhi Bhagavatam, before it was edited. Oh. <laughs> he says that the people who take drugs should be killed. 
<laughs> I mean, that's really wild. It's, it's quite strong. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we can discuss this some other time. But um, yeah, so my, my idea was that, wow, there is some higher reality. The drugs, they give a sort of an idea, but there's a very bad after effect. This is not the way. So then I saw George Harrison on TV and he said, drugs are like A, but you have to say B, C, D, E, F, G, A, right? right. You have to take initiative. It's not going to be so cheap. You're going to pop some pill and everything is going to be... And this is really nonsense, nonsense idea. Simply taking by some pills, you become self-realized. <laughs> nonsense. So you have to do some work. So then George Harrison also, he said, that's why I practice meditation. He gave the idea of meditation, I remember. So uh, then I read the Bhagavad Gita and with the idea that I want to practice something seriously. I was desperate. So then, although the philosophy was so heavy and there was God, I mean, I wasn't raised in a religious family like yourself. Um, we're pretty much kind of like... Agnostic. Yeah, like not committed to any mm. anything in particular. Mm. Um, so uh, uh, it was a challenge for me, even the idea of God, the supreme personality of Godhead. Very imposing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, on the other hand, I like that. When you read Prabhupada's books, it's like super ultra fanatical. Mm. It's so fanatical that you almost think you know, this is... This can't be right, <laughs> right? Krishna is, every, every Prabhupada is all the time emphasizing Krishna is the Godhead and there's no one higher than him and he's the supreme of all supremes and, and always, always putting Krishna on the top. Jai. It's, it's almost like a trance. You can, you can feel that Prabhupada is in a trance. Mm. It's not just some religion. No. But Prabhupada is really like, he's like a madman. He's always seeing Krishna in everything. Yeah. He actually has love for God. Yeah. It's yeah. not like a sentimental idea that, yeah. oh, yeah, I, I love God. So it's not I a formality. To, yeah, I, it's not that I, I love God, so I go to church once a week and yeah. I say I love God. No, yeah. it's like his... He doesn't care he, what people think about it. Yeah, we say Krishna, we say practicing Krishna consciousness. But Prabhupada is actually in Krishna consciousness. He's actually, his consciousness is like, ecstatic madness yeah there's the description that um the one's mind in that perfect state of self-realization it becomes the mind of the supreme personality it's always absorbed in love for krishna so he can't he doesn't think about anything really outside of relationship yeah to krishna it's very yeah amazing so anyway i uh, the philosophy was a little bit difficult to accept in the beginning but i started chanting I started chanting, so I recommend if you are uh, uh, trying to experiment with Krishna consciousness or you have a struggle or this and that, just go on chanting. Just go on chanting. Chanting Hare Krishna is everything, is the essence of everything. And that's how slowly, slowly you will get the strength to follow all the regulative principles and get the desire also to do other things and right. become fixed up. Just go on chanting, go on chanting. So I, that's what I was doing. I just continued chanting, 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 chanting. And I'm chanting until now. Yeah. Actually, it's automatic that I also, I remember that, I mean, I wasn't uh, so, mm. I didn't have this idea that, uh, um, I wasn't so averse to it mm -hmm. because I had these experiences with drugs where I kind of, I realized that my, I'm not my senses, actually. Okay. It, like a preliminary, you could say almost preliminary self-realization. Not exactly to puff, to puff myself up, but I had this idea at least, you know, that there's something more, like you said, there's something more to reality than just immediate enjoying of the senses right so i was something like, beautiful something beautiful something transcendentally beautiful amazing something that something that i can actually be happy without extraneous like an extraneous um well of course it's not exactly like that but there is a state of consciousness that is just 
happiness. It's not fluctuating right. between right. constant suffering and then a little relief here and there. No, your consciousness actually has a point where it's clear. Just, just the very idea of, we can have that idea even theoretically. You're thinking of like the, the, the reality where everything is bliss. You can, you know, just have this as a theoretical concept. Right. A reality where everything is full of love and bliss. And pleasure. And pleasure. That, you know, everyone can accept this, at least theoretically. Yeah. Why you can accept it? Because you have a previous experience. If there was no experience, you can never accept such a thing. Yeah, you have the experience that, oh, this is limited. Yeah. This is suffering. So there must be unlimited. There must be... Uh, you there know, must like be happiness. Say, unending happiness. Yeah. yeah, it must be there. So why not focus if it exists, if we can ascertain theoretically that such a world exists, why not focus on finding that world? Why not try to understand it? Yeah. yeah. And so, then the Vedas are there, Bhagavad Gita is there, Srila Prabhupada is there, Bonafide Guru. Uh, he just fills up that gap. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. But if you don't have that desire, if you just say, well, that is a made up story, if you, if you, don't have any faith, faith, and not necessarily faith in anything external, but faith in your heart, because we can perceive this in our heart. We have love. We have the idea of perfection, of some supreme blissful reality. We have that concept there. We're all looking for it. If you're not sincere, if you don't listen to your heart, then none of this information will be of any use to you. If you're not even so much of a heart-driven person, if you're more of a logic-driven person, you can also just ascertain if you have any sense. But everyone but is a heart. Everyone has a heart. Heart person. But if you don't want to listen, if you don't want to have faith, because you think this word faith is kind of like a, a, a sentimental word or whatever. Yeah. You know, of course, it's not. But the other thing is that uh, you can just see this life is, it is suffering, actually. There is no pleasure here actually all the pleasure that you experience is just a relief from um suffering yeah like sex life yeah sex life is a relief it's just a moment two seconds <laughs> uh relaxing of the muscles actually that's all yeah. it is you're sexually agitated right yeah. then you're pursuing the the woman or the man and then you get the man or woman and then you release and that's it. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it causes more suffering afterwards. <laughs> yeah. And then you try to do it again. It's like when they're trying to scratch an itch. You scratch an itch, you scratch it, and then it gets worse. You get like a rash or something. That's why Bhakti Sananda Saraswati said, this is the world of cheaters and cheaters. Right. We're cheating ourselves. Are we over the time, Prabhu? Is there such a thing? <laughs> this is... Sat Chit Ananda podcast, the okay? it's it it it's it, uh, uh, Sat Eternal. Right, it never ends. Never ends. This podcast <laughs> never ends. We're just gonna go on for eternity. Now you have to listen to this for eternity. I hope you bought a so, lot of water and stuff to. It's like coronavirus. <laughs> it's like coronavirus it goes for eternity. <laughs> this is the this is the real coronavirus podcast because it will go on till the end, at least of coronavirus. Yeah. So, anyway, so let yeah. us know in the comment section what you think about this. What, share some of your experiences with Krishna consciousness and try to ascertain your, your level or try to also ascertain your obstacles. What is stopping you? What is your doubt in Krishna consciousness? And talk, let's talk about it. Yeah. I like just one more thing I like to recommend yeah. to people that you recommended the chanting and also, yeah, I was also chanting. And it's, it, it gives you immediately the experience that something, like, even you don't believe in yeah. Krishna. Yeah. You don't have to read the philosophy. Don't believe. Don't believe. But if you just chant, then you can understand, okay, maybe I can open my mind. Yes. Because it is something um, beyond... Transcendental. It's transcendental. I remember the first time I chanted, I was like... I tried so many things actually, you know, so I've been looking for so long, so many different meditations and I was meditating for hours and nothing actually worked until I chanted Hare Krishna. There was actually some um, tangible effect. Yeah. But yeah, that's also not to minimize the value of Srila Prabhupada's books because that is, um, Prabhupada is like you said, he's always establishing 
that Krishna is the supreme Godhead. And if you actually, um, like with an open mind, like Prabodhananda Saraswati. Thank you. Um, like he says, if you read it with an open mind, you'll find that it is sublime. You can't, um, there's no unanswered question in Krishna consciousness. Right. You ask the devotees, you try and challenge the devotees. Yeah. You come to the temple, you come to the lecture, you ask a question, you have some challenge, you, have some, um, you find some discrepancy, it will immediately be clarified. It will immediately, you'll find the answer to your challenge because it is um, the only perfect philosophy. Sometimes people, they don't have this uh, question answered. They, they say, how can I be God? So the devotees, they don't answer this question <laughs> because it's a stupid idea. Right. Well, you can, you can be God in the sense that you can be uh, realize that you're part and parcel of God. And you're satisfied, actually. But people don't want that. People don't want that. <laughs> well, people think that will make them happy. But yeah, yeah. you have to realize we'll actually make you happy. So anyway, yeah, the end of it is that at the end of both of our journeys, we realize that... Prabhupada's books and chanting Hare Krishna is really the only, the only way to be fanatical about it. You're fanatical about eating, sleeping, sex and <laughs> fighting anyway. Right. Fanatical about making money. Fanatical about, you know, uh, broadcasting this false idea of who you are to your friends and Facebook and whatever. So why not be fanatical about that eternal wonderful yeah. spiritual um, consciousness yeah. that we all are aspiring for anyway yeah why not take it seriously yeah you're at, you actually are fanatical about trying to be happy yeah you are fanatical about that same subject matter right it's just simply a change of viewpoint yes yeah exactly so yeah that was okay maybe we can end here um, oh, there was no gypsies this time. Anyway. Gypsies will come to next time. There will be another time for gypsies. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you can get in contact with The Bliss on the social media, the various platforms. I think we mentioned that at the beginning. But just as another reminder, go on the Instagram, go on the Facebook, go on the website, go on the two YouTube channels that we have. Go and support us on the Patreon and the GoFundMe, because this is a very important movement. It's an authorized movement, and it was a movement that will see that everyone feels uh, fulfilled, and they will no longer be in the darkness of ignorance. So if you uh, are watching this right now, grab the link. You can just go up to the link bar, and you just copy, you just copy it, <laughs> you just highlight it, and then you right-click, very simple process, and then you copy it and then you just paste it on your Facebook and you post it on your Facebook. It's You're posting so many things on Facebook anyway. Send it to your parents. Send it to your parents, send it to your friends, send it to your boss, send it to whoever and share like crazy this podcast and everything Bliss related and then kindly give a donation so the podcast and everything else, all the other activities that we do here can go on very smoothly. I also highly recommend that you... Um uh, here, Srila Prabhupada, Jai. our spiritual master. He is an amazing personality, most amazing. Um, if you hear from him, his classes, conversation, anything, videos, books, there's so much materials available Srila Prabhupada left behind. Um, if you do this at least an hour every day, if you get a good um, grasp on what he says, uh, it will completely change your life. I agree wholeheartedly. So make an experiment. It's a little bit, you need a little bit more endeavor. Uh, a little endeavor is required. The Facebook is distracting. Instagram is distracting. YouTube, so many distractions. Try to uh, be uh, determined and make this austerity. It's almost like an austerity, right? to get free from these distractions and hear from Srila Prabhupada. And yeah, then tell us your experience. Right. Okay. Jai. Jai. Jai Prabhupada. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. We're not gonna have
I think it's required for the dun 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 dun. dun. You know this song? Ah, sorry. Sorry, I just I have a uh, I have a hankering. My Drea. <laughs> That's the 